It's a certified hood classic. Look at my pants. Welcome. We're back with another urban planning theme video. In this video, I am going to take you through a couple of days in my life, talk about some projects that I'm working on, some of the struggles that I'm currently facing. I really value authenticity, so I want to give you guys a very transparent look into what a career could potentially look like in a path that's related to urban planning i discussed a little bit more about my job in detail in previous videos so if you would like to learn more about what it is that i do please check those videos out if you haven't seen them already yeah there's a lot going on a lot of work updates project updates ways that you can support some of the businesses that i work with through purchasing one of these tote bags so if you are interested in hearing more from me then please keep watching i woke up this morning and decided you know what this will be a good week to do another week in my life urban planning edition okay, so first let me just address a couple different things there's a lot of chaos in the background i've just moved my furniture is not all put together so yeah that's why there are like various pieces of furniture in disarray in the background I'm also like, just woke up about a half hour ago, so I have this <laughs> this bonnet on right now. Anyway, so that's that. To be honest, I'm not really sure exactly what's going on this week. I know we have like a couple of big meetings. There's a congressman coming to the corridor that I work on, and we're supposed to give him a tour, do a presentation about our work. I think that's tomorrow, but honestly, I'm not really sure what's going on. People just add stuff to my calendar, and then I just show up i've pretty much been in the office at least three days a week this morning i have a meeting at nine o'clock it's now 8 13 i'm already dressed so i can kind of do some notes for this meeting do the meeting and then i have to actually go to the corridor i have like an in-person i'm not even sure what it is i have to check my calendar and then hopefully i can get back here by afternoon because honestly at this point i'm kind of over doing anything in person like i really just enjoy working from home and being fully virtual but the nature of the work i do makes that kind of unrealistic so it's a few minutes later i've eaten my breakfast <gasps> no so yeah i have a meeting in two minutes uh, i'm gonna call all of you guys telling you about the marshal and the cheating and the something and the other I just got home from the two meetings I think I mentioned before I left. My intention was to take my camera. I forgot, vlogger of the year. <laughs> so we had two meetings with two different schools in the neighborhood, me and my manager. So the first one was to talk about this public space project that we're working on in collaboration with the library and also with the local high school shop program. So basically the high school students are designing benches that are gonna be like movable art pieces at the same time. They'll have some mutual aid products as well, feature some books and highlight pertinent information for the community. So I was really excited to be able to sit in on that conversation just to talk about the logistics of, you know, putting these benches together. We got to see the benches in progress and also talk about some art designs that we're considering and local artists that we would wanna partner with. So that was really cool for the most part, like the students input has been at the forefront of this project which has been really cool to see it is now 1 20 p.m i'm gonna pray and then make some lunch and then do some more work hello i started this yesterday i don't know if i ever finished updating yesterday this morning i did a tour with some members of the congressman's office we took them on a tour of the corridor pointed out some recent acquisitions and like development projects that we're working on i personally don't really like doing tours just because i feel like it makes the corridor into like a spectacle but you know sometimes it's like a requirement for the job so i did that this morning i'm back home now it's around 1 30. inventory but like i took notes on my phone the couple of days i went out oh yeah so it's about cleaning commercial corridor shopping areas throughout the city okay yeah i can email her building a better business corridor and a safer place for people to shop is a good like that helps solve the the other issues i think you know we we believe the part is the design once you get the buy-in on doing it
Rockstar Life, so much money, I make you laugh, hey. Good morning. Today is a day that I have to be in the office for office hours, so I'm getting ready to head out, but just wanted to intro the video really quickly. So I'll be in the office for half of the day, then I have to go to my other office and clean out my desk because we're actually gearing up to go back into the office full time, but they're trying to rearrange the office space so there will be more distance. I haven't actually been to my desk in our main office since March of 2020, so I have no idea what stuff I left there. So I'm gonna go collect that. Good, how about you? I'm in the um, satellite office now, but I have a couple minutes. Sorry, I have my phone on mute. It's in Harrisburg again, right? Or is it somewhere else? such an unpleasant experience there's always the smell of piss and vomit like i could just get a car i could just get a car but for some reason i just like torturing myself by taking septa i think i'm gonna go get some coffee here's some other stuff that i've been working on these are smaller smaller canvases and then i did this last night this was a lot of fun cool ultimately is going to be to start an etsy shop so look out for that if you would like to support my art it just be feeling weird to be out here with a camera i mean that's beautiful like yeah this is really nice i, I, really I like it appreciate you just having this space here Right. You know, right, in the community. right. Yeah. This is the selfie where everybody was taking pictures in here. And this, oh yeah, God. yeah, this yeah, is nice. Is so what are the services that you offer? So we're doing body contouring, everything non-invasive. Is this so all do... for women? No, no, men, men have fat too, fat reduction. We have um, detox staining. We do like the sauna detox. Two people can fit in. Oh, very nice. Yeah. It's very hot, steam sauna. Well, I like the artwork in here too. I did everything with my own hands. Really? Wow. We out here on the strip. In one word, how would you describe? Vibrant. Vibrant. Okay. Always something going on out here. Always something to see. Some folks dancing on the corner. Okay. They've stopped. <laughs> So let's start with the good stuff. Let's start with the exciting projects. One of the things I've been able to work on the past couple of months is a project in collaboration with Urban Outfitters. If you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen me talking about these tote bags. Basically, at the end of 2020, Urban Outfitters reached out to my office and they were interested in collaborating on a project to support local West Philly businesses. Now, for those of you that may not have seen my previous videos, I work as a commercial corridor manager and this includes economic development, urban planning, community organizing, basically all wrapped up into one job one component of my work is working with small businesses that are located on or around the commercial corridor that i manage so when urban reached out and was interested in collaborating on a project to support these businesses we did some brainstorming and decided that we wanted to come up with a a product that would highlight some of the legacy businesses on the corridor and when i say legacy businesses i'm referring to long-standing businesses that have been open since 60s early 70s that are black owned and that have transitioned ownership within the family so we actually have a few of these businesses i think there's seven or eight that were started by someone in the family and most of them now are under the ownership of either the the child or the grandchild of the original owner so we wanted to highlight those businesses a lot of them are really cool they sell a lot of interesting products so we 
collaborated with Urban and then also with a local West Philly based artist named Allende. And Allende was able to design these really cool bags for us. And the great thing about these bags is that all of the proceeds that are raised as a result of the sale of these bags go directly to these legacy businesses. So we're, we're helping to support businesses in our community, encouraging people to shop local. And these are currently available at Urban Outfitters locations in Philly, at the West Philly location near Penn, and then also at the Center City location. And then also online, not on Urban Outfitters website, but on African Cultural Art Forum, which is one of the businesses that's highlighted on the back of the bag. You can purchase one of these tote bags on their website. I'm really passionate about connecting with local artists and really trying to include them in as many of the placemaking projects that we're able to do. So this was one of many, I hope, that we get to you know collaborate with local talent to bring some of these projects to life. I'm really big on art and I just think art has the power to create beauty, create positive change in a neighborhood that really needs it. So I was excited about this. We also got recently got bikes on the corridor as well. Here they're called Indigo. Other places they probably have different names. So basically it's like a, a bike share program where you just pay. I don't even know how much you have to pay. I'm not really a bike rider. You can come out, rent a bike, go to the park. But those are like the highlights of my work over the past couple of months. But as you can imagine, not everything is peachy keen. So I work in West Philly. Philly has had a lot of gun violence over the past year. Crazy levels of shootings and just like violent crime in a way that I personally don't feel safe in the city anymore because a lot of the violence is very random. And I don't want to be paranoid, but I do want to be realistic about, you know, the area that I work in is not quite frankly, is not very safe. So that's something that I'm grappling with because a large component of my job is being out on the street, going door to door, connecting with business owners, identifying their needs, talking to community members and doing some of this like grassroots organizing. But when I don't personally feel safe being out there, I don't know, it just, it kind of impacts my ability to do my job most effectively. But at the same time, I'm not willing to compromise my personal safety and well-being for a job period like i'm just not willing to do that but there still is the expectation from my employer that i'm out doing these you know door to door interactions so that's something i'm really trying to work through i don't really have a solution right now so yeah and as a person that's working on the corridor and trying to promote the corridor as a destination for people to come out to shop and to go to events part of that feels very disconnected from the reality of what's actually happening on the corridor like if i don't feel safe doing outdoor events on the corridor how can i promote it to other people to come out and be like hey come come to jazz in the park or like come to this outdoor carnival festival and on another corridor back on july 4th there was a business owner a young guy entrepreneur who hosted a, a cookout just to like celebrate i think it was like the one year anniversary of him having a clothing store and he's you know trying to do something good for the community and he gets killed like the whole event got shot up there were like over 100 shots fired and that happened i was like see this is this kind of work is not it's not sustainable long term just the fact that you you could be out trying to do good trying to build the community and give back in a positive way and it could just go so wrong it just made me have a lot of second thoughts about what it is that i want to do long term and how long i'm willing to be out in the field doing this kind of grassroots work i feel like part of the reason why i wanted to go into a career related to urban planning was i felt like it would be a, a way for me to give back to my city in a meaningful way but at the same time i don't know if i'm willing to compromise on my personal well-being on the quest to make my city a better place you know what i mean because it's like i could be somewhere in much safer conditions in a much nicer office and quite frankly probably making a lot more money if i didn't feel this weird like sense of obligation to improve the community in some way i don't know it's just i'm just really trying to figure out what it is that i want to do long term and then there's also been issues with drug addiction in the community homelessness we don't really have a lot of social services in the area to address you know the homeless population and help them to get 
their needs met. So that's also been pretty problematic. And I hear it from both sides, from a health and safety standpoint. And then like from the business owners, they complain just because it's like you have homeless people sitting on the, the steps of their business, serves as a deterrent for customers. And they see people just like sprawled out on the steps, drunk or high. So it's a, it's a lot of problems. Like there's a lot of, a lot of issues, you know, in, in West Philly and Philly as a whole, like Philly, is undergoing a huge opioid crisis. I wanna to help to create change and do something good, but I don't want to sacrifice my mental health and my well-being in the process. So right now, I'm just really trying to make sure that I have some kind of balance in my life. My job can be a little bit stressful, or just a little bit, I don't wanna say gross, but just, it's like if you're constantly exposed to environments that are just, that don't look nice, they're not aesthetically pleasing, they're dirty, but at least for me, it just has an impact on my mental and like how I feel. So I'm trying to balance that by making sure that I'm spending time building myself back up, replenishing myself spiritually and mentally, taking time for my hobbies, taking time to create things, just trying to do other things to bring balance and bring beauty and bring joy into my life. I don't think this is an issue that's unique to me. I'm sure that other people in similar types of roles, community facing roles, community organizing roles face similar challenges. I don't know there's just a lot of things that I'm these are just my thoughts that I've been thinking <laughs> but yeah and there's some other really cool stuff that's happening within the next couple of months you're working on a podcast project to highlight some of these legacy businesses in the community so that should be up and running pretty soon and there's other ways too that if you would like to support small businesses in West Philly I'll leave a link down below for donations Hi guys, I was actually sitting here editing this video when I got an email from my manager about a project that I'm really excited about that we've been working on for a while. I just got an email that a draft of the project has been completed. So we're working on this digital storytelling project with some of the legacy businesses that I think I mentioned at some point in this video. But a draft of the podcast has just been completed, it's just been released. I'm really excited, I'm about to listen to it for the first time. It's with a business called Hakeem's Bookstore. Hakeem's Bookstore is actually the oldest black owned bookstore on the East Coast. They opened up in the late 60s, West Philly community staple, and we were able to get the owner to agree to do a podcast just talking about the history of Hakeem's Bookstore. It was founded by her dad and she has taken over ownership after he passed away so we've been working with a really cool production team and they put together this podcast for us so we're gonna hopefully turn this into a series just highlighting different legacy businesses in west philly so it's super super exciting to me to me i'm super excited about it so let's check out this podcast my name is Yvonne, and we're at Hakeem's Bookstore, located at 210 South 52nd Street in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This is the first and oldest African-American bookstore Sounds like in Philadelphia and on the East Coast. Good morning. So I think today is going to be the last day that I include in this particular vlog because it's getting pretty long, but today I'm actually going to show another part of my job that I probably haven't shown thus far, which is business promotion. So a sneaker store has just opened up on the corridor. They were closed due to the pandemic and then also due to civil unrest that happened last summer but they are finally reopening which is really exciting so i talked to the owner and we discussed doing a short promo video for the business just to inform people that they're back open let people know about the history of the store some things that they're excited about in the future so i'm just gonna go with my camera and just do a quick little clip for them and then post it on our social media channels and then also give the video to them so they can post it as they please. Just a little something I like to do as part of our package for the businesses. And it's just me filming. It's not like a professional camera person or anything. So the service is completely free. Getting ready to head out to go meet him and then also probably stop in at the office. I have some stuff I wanna print out for some meetings that I have later. So that's the plan for today. Olympia has been in this neighborhood since 1980. Our original store, I think, was on 26 South 52nd around the corner. We sell footwear and apparel. We have locations around the city, but I like to think that this West Philly one is kind of the main one. 
then $100 even if the sneakers are on sale, you will get additional 10% off. Well, I didn't just get home. I got home like an hour ago. I'm eating my lunch, roasted cauliflower ball. Shout out to Trader Joe's. So I'm gonna edit the video that I took for that business, and they were really nice. So I'm gonna edit that video now and then send it to him before we post on our organization's social media. But yeah, like I said, I feel like this video is kind of long at this point, so I'm gonna end it here. Thank you guys for hanging out with me over the past couple of days. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and I will see you in my next video. I'm so excited. I don't really wear anything with heels, so I'm gonna bring these out maybe on a hot date. <laughs> A certified hood classic.